Hello, I am Dr. Vijay Patil, and today I will be talking with you about throat cancer. Now, throat cancer is a generic term. When we say throat cancer, we are actually dealing with two cancers. One is the laryngeal cancer, and one is the pharyngeal cancers. Now, when we talk about the pharyngeal cancers, these are quite common in India. Pharynx has three parts. One is nasopharynx, which is the part behind your ear, uh, behind your nose. Oropharynx, which is the part behind the oral cavity, and something which is called as hypopharynx, which is the lower part of the pharynx, from which the food pipe then takes the food below, uh, up to the stomach. Hypopharyngeal cancers are common in India. We get around 20,000 cases every every year, followed by oropharyngeal cancer, in which we get 20,000 odd cases every year. Nasopharynx in India has disproportionate uh, incidence, which means in some parts of the India it's common, in some parts it's uncommon. We get 5,500 cases per year. It's quite common in Kashmir and in northeast states of India. Laryngeal cancers, all taken together, we get around 34,000 cases per year in India. So you could see that the throat cancers, larynx and pharyngeal cancers are quite common in India. And today we'll talk about how we can identify that whether we would be suffering from any of these cancers. And we will go uh, sideways anatomically. Now, nasopharyngeal cancers, this cancer has a bimodal uh, age distribution, which means this cancer is seen in second to third decade of your life and also in the fifth and sixth decade of your life. How does this cancer present? This cancer, in this cancer, a mass is formed behind the nose in the pharynx. And because of that, the, the Patients who have this cancer have nasal stuffiness. They commonly would have neck nodes, which means that there will be swelling seen in the neck. And commonly these patients also have some amount of discrepancy in visualization because of involvement of the nerves which supply the eyes. Let's come to oropharyngeal cancers. Now this cancer arises behind the oral cavity. So it causes difficulty in swallowing. It causes change in the texture of the voice. A classical voice which this uh, patients have is something what is called as hot potato voice, which means if you take something very hot thing in your mouth and if you try to speak, the voice would be like that. It also causes pain. The, the pain which is seen by oropharyngeal cancer is quite peculiar. They may have throat pain, but quite a bit of time these patients also complain of ear pain. So if you're having persistent ear pain, and you have visited an ENT doctor and he says he has seen that the ear is absolutely okay, then it may be one of the signs of ha having a oropharyngeal cancer. Now let's come to the hypopharyngeal cancers. Hypopharyngeal cancers are seen in 5th to 6th decade of your life. Now this cancer, because this, this is the topmost part of your food pipe, this cancer commonly presents with difficulty in swallowing. This difficulty in swallowing is initially for solid foods that subsequently progresses to liquid foods. Because you have difficulty in swallowing, these patients commonly have weight loss also and commonly have anemia which is low hemoglobin uh, is seen with this cancer. When we talk about laryngeal cancer, this is nothing but those cancers which arise from the voice box. So the obvious symptom is hoarseness of voice or change in the texture of the voice. If you have persistent hoarseness of voice, or persistent difficulty in swallowing, or persistent throat pain or ear pains, or persistent nasal discharge or nasal congestion, this means that you might be having one of these cancers and you need to visit a doctor. When I say persistent, which means this have to be going on for quite a bit of weeks, commonly we talk about at least one to two, two months, which is like six to eight weeks, these symptoms should be persistent for you to have these cancers. What would the doctor do when you, if, if you visit, commonly you need to visit the ENT specialist in this. He would examine your nose, he would examine your throat, he would insert some tube and have a look at the hypopharynx, the oropharynx and the nasopharynx and that would clarify whether you have this cancer or not. Now, why do people develop this cancer? Now, each of these cancer has different etiologies and we'll talk about them. Let's start from nasopharyngeal cancer. Nasopharyngeal cancer is caused because of a virus called Epstein-Barr virus. 
It's commonly seen because of eating smoked food and uh, preserved substances. So if you avoid smoked food and preserved substances, the chances of developing this cancer can go down. Oropharyngeal cancer is commonly due to a virus again called HPV, that is human papilloma virus virus. The this is a is caused this actually is a sexually transmitted virus and oropharyngeal cancers are common in those patients who have the habit of oral sex. So if you avoid oral sex, the chances of developing oropharyngeal cancers goes down. We do also have HPV negative oropharyngeal cancers. These are caused by tobacco and alcohol intake. Hypopharyngeal cancers, the risk factors again are mainly tobacco, alcohol and alcohol intake. Laryngeal cancers, the risk factors again are alcohol intake and tobacco. So what you would see that in most of these cancers, alcohol intake and tobacco form a predominant role. And it's said that if you could cut down on the cut down or actually stop the use of alcohol and tobacco, a lot amount of these cancers can go down. One out of four cancers in India can be prevented if we cut down on this modifiable risk factors.